wine drinking people, we are back. All right, next up we had, uh, hey, Chris Govolo. Uh, one of the old employees of the Wine Watch that has gone on and started his own company. And he started with a, a horrible idea, just bringing in wines from Oregon. So you really don't want to focus that much to me on an eclectic part of the wine world as a distributor. But hey, there's 467 distributors in the state of Florida. I guess there's room for everybody. And uh, he had some nice wines here, the Roots Viognier from Seven Hills. Oh, he's expanded into Washington. All right. Uh, this wine was almost un like though. Uh, had some nice peach and lychee nut fruit on the nose. Not quite as heavy as a lot of Viognier's. A hint of oak spice and a little nutty character there. But uh, smooth on the tongue. Nice texture of skim milk. And nice fresh pear and and, um, peach fruit, really lively, a hint of perfume on the finish, a really nicely balanced Viognier for 24 bucks. Next up, the Sand Hill Chardonnay from Durrell Vineyard. And, uh, oh, wow, he's branched out into California now, too. Look at that. What a surprise. Couldn't make it just selling a wine from Oregon, huh, Chris? Okay, this is a nice little wine. I'm sorry, but there are more than five producers from Durrell. This is a very famous vineyard. I think we looked up like seven or eight on Wine Searcher alone just the other day when he was in. But a nice little wine, maybe a little bit expensive for what it is, but pretty rich, a little bit of that butterscotch and toasty oak showing, and a lovely tropical fruit that you get from uh, California Chardonnay. Next up, a Pinot Noir from Oregon. <laughs> All right, our first wine from Oregon, Vita Springs. Uh, nice, but a little bit light, even though this 08 vintage is pretty good from Oregon. Uh, for someone that specializes in Oregon Pinot, we're expecting a little more for a $30 retail wine. Then the Thistle Pinot Noir, which this wine got great press uh, from the Dundee Hills. Light red cherry fruit on the nose, a hint of some green herbs there. Um, a lot of these 2007s have this lovely savoriness to the finish. However, they're missing a little bit of fruit in the mid-palate for me. And uh, this wine was kind of typical of the 07 vintage. Hey, 08 White Rose, man. This is a hot winery in Oregon. Just got huge write-ups. I'm sure they're believing you go to a bigger distributor, Chris. Sorry, buddy. But, uh, man, you're the first people to bring this wine down here to South Florida. And even a blind squirrel finds a nut every once in a while. One of the hot properties in Oregon. Really nice stuff. Some exotic spices, dried flowers on the nose, red cherry and raspberry fruit. Uh, really complex bouquet. And uh, for $33, man, this is an excellent bottle of Pinot Noir. Lovely freshness, lovely balance, nice texture, silky, velvety on the tongue. This wine is in the store, available at the Wine Watch, $33.75. All right, Chris, a big hand. I think you sold us more wine in this outing than in any other trip here. Congratulations, buddy. I know you've got a couple kids at home and mouths to feed. All right. Well, then we had, a, ooh, let's see, a Grenache. Uh, some wines from Spain. This is a small importer, and uh, I want to say they're with uh, Casavino. And uh, some interesting stuff, a Grenache White, which uh, we don't do too much with that variety of the white category. You see some stuff in the Rhone Valley. Uh, nice little wine, and then the wine of the day, a Pinot Grigio. God, I never thought I would say that. But from this supplier, this was a great little Pinot Grigio, Guerra Albano from the Colli Orientali, the Friuli region. One of the greatest areas for Pinot Grigio in northern Italy. Uh, this one had lovely fresh green apple, lemon, lime, citrus fruit, hints of whetstone, a lot of the chocolatey kind of minerality you get from Pinot Grigios from this area here. A lot of that terroir showing through on the palate. Lovely concentration, lovely richness, really good stuff, man, for $20. Wow. The best one of the tasting Pinot Grigio. I didn't think it would ever happen. But uh, some other nice stuff, the Prosecco from uh, Mini Minu, or whatever the name is. Supposedly one of the best-selling Proseccos in Italy, but I can't get that excited about Prosecco, folks. It's cheap, sparkling wine. For $10, not bad. All right, and then Casto di Alosa Primitivo from Puglia. Puh, puh. Cheap wine from Puglia. It's like Montepulciano d'Abruzzo. Are you kidding me? Oof, not very good stuff. Very fine, which is one of my lowest ratings, and... You know, not a bad one, just not why I get out of bed in the morning. And then uh, Abita Mediterranea from the Priorat. This was a nice little Priorat, and uh, the Priorat has this lovely slaty minerality that makes it somewhat unique in these fresh floral notes and uh, black cherry and blackberry fruits. Really nice little wine and lovely texture on the tongue. Very typical Priorat at a very reasonable price for wine from this area, $30 a bottle. Very good. And then Brunello di Montalcino from 2004. I'm sorry, I said the Pinot Grigio was the best wine in this tasting. How can Pinot Grigio ever best Brunello, huh? 
This verbena, verbena brunello was a little better than the Pinot Grigio. Lovely wild strawberry fruit, nice red cherry fruit, tar, black spices, licorice hints, typical textbook. Uh, Brunello de Montalcino, 2004, a fabulous vintage. And uh, this was a really nice little wine, some of that sour cherry fruit showing on the finish, but firm tans and lovely freshness here. Really excellent stuff. And like I said, you wouldn't expect anything different from the 2004 vintage. And then, hey, Mario stuck in on us. Mario without an appointment. Hey, Mario, we're willing to see anybody that wants to taste us, taste wine with us. But please, make an appointment next time. It just so happens I was in a good mood. So we saw you in the Corte Pavone wines. Really excellent little wines. We've had these wines in the store before. The Corte Pavone Rosso de Montalcino. Uh, lovely fresh plowed earth, a little red plum, dark cocoa, old saddle leather. Really old school style wine from Montalcino. Uh, biodynamically farmed. Uh, $22.50, man. You just cannot beat what you can get coming out of Italy. And Tuscany for $20 really rules, man. Uh, Sangiovese, one of my favorite grape varietals, and uh, Montalcino producing 100% Sangiovese wines. And this Corte Pavoni 2005 Brunello, a, a pretty rustically fashioned wine here as well, with lots of flesh, fresh plowed earth, dried porcini mushrooms, and uh, barnyard-like aromas. Really classic old world style Brunello, this 2005 being very forward and drinkable in style. Still a bit tannic. Hey, it is Brunello de Montalcino, but all the right stuff here. Really nice little Brunello, 37.50. Wow. And then the 2006, man. 2006, a blockbuster vintage from Montalcino. In case you haven't heard, James Suckling gave it 97 points overall as a vintage. You're going to see a lot of big scores with this 2006 vintage from Montalcino. Unfortunately, the wine's a little bit hard to drink at the moment. Very big, very uh, top-heavy, really well endowed on the nose with some black truffle, uh, some black tar, some really big black fruit, and uh, on the palate, just almost undrinkable at this time, really tannic. Uh, you need to hold on to these wines the second day and bring them out to show people on them. I think they'll be ver very nice. The 2004 Corte Bavoni Brunello Montalcino Reserva, another blockbuster, very complex bouquet. Man, most excellent stuff. This 2004 vintage, if you love Brunello Montalcino, you want these reservas in your cellar. This wine, a really nice wine, and still not that expensive, $67.50. This Corte Pavoni wine, some of the best values in Montalcino. And hey, we had one wine to drink, I'm embarrassed to say, yesterday with a supplier, a Portuguese red. Somebody just popped in, Jose Maria de Fonseca, Domini from Douro. You're seeing a lot of great value stuff coming out of the Douro value today. This 2007 vintage, outstanding for the dry reds as well as for the fortified wines of Oporto. In case you haven't heard, this has been declared a vintage year in Oporto, and uh, two, nine, 2007 Dow's got 100 points in Spectator. But uh, this wine, Tariga Nacional, Tariga Franca, Tinto Roriz, which is their name for Tempranillo in Portugal, but uh, very grapey, almost reminiscent of Port on the nose with some lovely distinct black earth and dark cocoa spice, big and thick on the tongue with layers of black fruit, dark earth, and uh, man, $15.75. Some of the best values you'll find out there in the world of wine, this new stuff coming from Oporto. All right, folks, that's what I had to drink yesterday. I'm your host, Andrew Lampasone, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.